for tonight's service. I hope that you'll be sure and uh, be here tonight. Bring your Bible, bring your thinking cap, bring your heart for the service tonight as we'll continue our study on the seven life classes. And tonight, we're going to talk about angels. What are angels? Where'd they come from? What do they look like? What about fallen angels? What about all that? We're going to get into all that tonight. So uh, honestly, you don't want to miss. Brother Derek's talking about that Numbers chapter 5. Uh, this is another subject people know absolutely nothing about. Nothing about. They, honest to goodness, I'm not trying to sound mean, but people think angels are little naked babies flying around with a bow and arrow. Uh, they, you couldn't miss, you couldn't get <laughs> you couldn't get further off you tried. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, it's it's pitiful, isn't it? Pitiful. Uh, so don't miss tonight's service. Bring your Bible. Bring your Bible. All right, here in Mark chapter number five this morning. This is the story of the man who was possessed of demons, and nobody could stop him, contain him there in verses four and five. And, and six, and he come to the Lord there, and Jesus cast the demons out of this man. And uh, he said, we're legion for many. Many demons were in him. There was enough demon spirits in that man to fill 2,000 hogs and run them off down a cliff to kill herself in one person. That means people have something living in them that make a hog kill himself. You're talking about hog, you, nasty, hogs don't know what nasty is. You know what the nastiest thing on planet earth is? People. People do stuff hogs won't do. Say amen right there. And, uh, and, and brag about it and get elected for office. I'm telling you people, these, these people are, uh, this man was possessed and the devils were cast out. And Jesus told them to get out of him and they left him. And then in verse number 13, we'll take up our reading with verse number 13. And forthwith, Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. This guy got saved. He got straightened out. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. Look at this strange prayer in verse 17. And they begin to pray him to depart out of their coast. What a weird prayer. They prayed the Lord would leave. What a prayer. They prayed that he would depart out of their coast. Anybody got a special prayer request? Yeah, I got one. Will y'all pray that he'll leave town? That's how messed up people can get. You don't want to pray the Lord will leave, y'all. You pray he'll come and stay with us. And then in verse 18, and when he was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he, the guy that had been possessed, might be with him, Jesus. Now, hold your finger there. I'm going to read another verse. So he, he's got all straightened out. He's clothed in his right mind. Everybody's seen the change in him. He got saved, got right with God. And then they come in the ship and he said, Lord, can I come and go with you? Can't, I'm, man, I'm tired of this old life. I've got rid of all my old friends, all my old habits. I want to come be with you, Lord. And the Lord wouldn't let him. Look here what the Lord told him. Verse 19. How be it? Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him and all men did marvel. Now, he said, Lord, can I go be with you? The Lord said, no, you can't. I, want, I need you to go do this, 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 and this, and this. And he did. I want to preach to you on this subject this morning. Why you are still here. Why 
you are still here. How many, you don't have to raise your hand, how many have thought that, I wonder why I'm even still here? Yeah. Hey, you know, have you ever wondered, wonder why the Lord didn't just kill me, that last thing I went through, and just take me on? Have you ever wondered why the Lord didn't just take us on to heaven and perfect us when we got saved? Wouldn't that have made a lot more sense? Wouldn't, wouldn't it have been, if you thought, all right, when I got saved, all right, get me out of this mess. I don't like this world no more. Bam, took you on to heaven. Wouldn't that have saved a lot of junk and fussing and fighting and heartache and problem and drove, if you just went straight to heaven when you got saved? I mean, we're not a citizen of the world anymore. We're, we're strangers and pilgrims down here. Why didn't, the Lord, why didn't the Lord just say, all right, you got saved, Danny. Uh, uh, come on home and be with you. Back when I was 18 years old, he's left me here all these years. Why are you still here? Why am I still here? I'm going to tell you why. Have you ever thought, well, why leave us here to be hurt and get our feelings crushed and our heart broke and to be tread upon like animals and mess up and get out of touch with, the, with everything and get all our lives all contrary. And uh, Think of the times you could have left here. I want you to think of the times in your life it could have went the other way and you wouldn't even be here right now. Think about that. Now, I know everybody in here has probably got a story. Brother Danny, I remember one time I, uh, I had to go to the doctor and, boy, if they hadn't have caught it right when they did, I probably wouldn't be here. All, all is about winning car wrecks, right? Lord, I couldn't tell you the times, y'all. I couldn't tell you the times that I've come that close only by the grace of God. I have drove millions of my millions. I'm not exaggerating. Mill I started counting out the cars I'd wore out one time and lost count. If you put 100,000 miles on one, all it takes is 10. That's a million miles. And I've had a lot more than 10. And I've got, uh, I've got, uh, one, I got one sitting out there with 100 and... Uh, 30, 30 almost on it, uh, 29, something like 20-something on it. One at home with 200 and something. Uh, another at home with 150-something. Uh, and and uh, you think, my goodness, you must be a good driver. Not really, not really. I come out in, in, in Florida coming through Orlando and places like that, and I'd be flying through there uh, 70 and 75 miles an hour, traffic in front of you, traffic behind you, and there'll be a big brick wall about that high on this side, and a tractor and trailer starts coming over. I've had that happen to me. And I mean, you got about a half a second to make up your mind what you're going to do. And he's coming over. He's coming over. He's, you're in his blind spot, and he didn't see guys sitting line on, and he's coming over, and you see that. Here's a brick wall, and you see the road getting littler and littler like that. And I'm, I have been there more than once, and you either, if you slam on your brakes, you're going to get back here. And I put my feet on the gas and mashed the floor it and shot right through that little hole as he was coming over like that. That's happened to me before. I was coming back from Florida one night in the middle of the night, and it was raining, dark, or at least foggy. It might have quit raining by then. Foggy, 3 o'clock in the morning, going up the interstate, you know, just boom, 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 white lines, white lines, white lines, white lines, white lines, white lines. And, and all of a sudden... I, it was a car sitting sideways in the middle of the road. No lights on. I don't know if they'd wrecked. I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, I did not have time to slow down. I did not have time. And I went like this and went around that thing. I don't know how. I, somebody back behind me bound to hit that car. I, I wonder to this day what happened. They wouldn't know where to go. And sometimes you think, have you ever thought, God, why am I still here? I meet people once in a while, some smart aleck, and I mean, oh, Danny, you still here? And I was like, you don't look so hot yourself, son. Uh, you know, the, the longer you, you know, you know, when you get 40, it's downhill from then on, right? You ain't going to get no better. I mean, it's downhill. And some of you peaked out about 17 and, and been going down ever since. But uh, it's true. It's true. But, you know, you, know, you, you start thinking, the Lord, why, why didn't you just kill me while you had a change? Why? And, and, you, and you think, uh, I, I've heard people's testimony. They'll say, I've been in three car wrecks. I've had heart attack, cancer, back surgery. Why am I still here? 
why am I still here? Well, that boy, that's what the guy said. He said, Lord, can I go with you? And he said, no. And I'm going to tell you why you are sitting on that seat this morning and why you're still alive. You listening? It is not so you can eat. Some people, that's all they think about is eating. Nothing wrong with it. I love it too. I love to eat. I love I love food. I enjoy it. It is not to play. I love to play. That's not why God leaves you here. That's not. You know what he told this guy? He said, buddy, you can't go with me. And the guy said, why? And he said, you go home and you tell your family and your loved ones how great things the Lord hath done for you. And, and, and the Bible said he did that. And all men did marvel. So really... There's just three little quick things I want to say to you this morning. Why you are still here on this planet. You say, well, I'm, I'm here to take care of my family, preacher. Now, you can do that while you're here, but that's not really why you're here, according to Scripture. Uh, you say, well, I'm here uh, to do this. No, I mean, that's, that can be part of it. Uh, you're not here just to get your house paid off or to make a living or even to see your kids grown. Plenty of people die without seeing their kids grow. Many of you grew up without a, a, a real mother and dad or something like that. You are here, number one, you are here to witness. You are here to witness. You can't do that in heaven. You can't witness in heaven. One more time, y'all. We can't witness in heaven. There ain't nobody to witness to. Everybody in heaven is saved. Everybody in heaven has got their sins are gone. Everybody in heaven's got it made forever. You can't witness in heaven. God left us down here to witness. God left us down here to witness. Uh, he said, go home to your friends. Go home to your friends. Have you told your friends about Jesus? Have you actually sat down and took the Bible or a tract and told some, some of your friends or somebody you work with? I want to challenge everybody here. You know, we're living in a time every, every Bible preacher I know of, every Bible preacher I know of that even knows half of uh, what he's talking about is preaching. We are in the end times. Things are winding down. The Lord must be coming. Everyone, I, I don't know, one true Bible-believing preacher that says, oh, we ain't nowhere near the end. I don't know nobody that believes that. Brother, there's been things happen this year that we've never seen happen before on a scale which we've never seen before. Our country has changed more in the last year. Some for the maybe a little bit for the good, but 90% for the bad. I'm telling you, brother, we're in a mess like we've never seen before. Uh, the Lord is coming. If there has ever been a time in history when God's people need to show this world what the truth is, where the light is, what hope is, it's the time when you're living in. Would you agree with that? Listen, there's never been a time when we can let our light shine any brighter than we can right now. Shining light? Are you kidding me? What a time to let the light shine, people. What a time to say, I know the light. I know the light. I know who is the light. To this boy, uh, years and years ago, back in the 1800s, he met this old crippled man. And this man had a, had a cripple in his walk, and he walked like that. And he met this young man, and he was talking to him. And the young man said, uh, what's your business, sir? He said, I'm out hunting sheep. And the, guy thought, the boy thought he was crazy. He went home and told his daddy, he said, I met this crazy man out there on the street. He said he, he, he walked weird and he, he acted weird and he said he was hunting sheep. There ain't no sheep around here. What's the matter with that guy? And you know who it was? It was an old man by the, the name. They called him Uncle John Vassar. And Uncle John Vassar was a full-time soul winner. He was a soul winner. You know what he did? He took tracks. He took whatever he could get a hold of. He met people and said, are, are you a Christian? And he'd pray with them and literally lead them to the Lord right on the street and on the parks and stuff. And he said, I'm hunting sheep. That's what he meant. He's hunting sheep to lead them to the Lord. He had, been, he had worked at a brewery, worked at a place where they made uh, liquor, whiskey. And, uh, and uh, when he got saved, he got converted, his conscience forced him to quit. 
Did you hear me? Did everybody hear me? I said the man worked at a brewery, and when he got saved, his conscience forced him to quit. He said, I can't live with myself and be right and sell liquor. Nowadays, the preachers go out and have one after service on Sunday evening uh, with some of the deacons. Uh, now, that's how it shows right, what kind of mess we're in. But anyway, he, he gave it up. His life changed. His wife had died, and he vowed. Listen to me. He vowed to spend his life winning people to the Lord Jesus Christ. They called, he called himself the shepherd dog. And uh, he said, I'm, I'm a dog, like a, like a sheep dog. I go and round in the sheep. And what a place, what a place. And they went from one place to another place and won literally thousands of people to the Lord. And they said he died in 1878. And they said Uncle John Vassar was the most skillful personal soul winner that they had ever seen in that part of the country. I got to thinking about that and I thought, my goodness, what a compliment. What a compliment. Now, you know, people say, boy, he was a great hunter or he was a great fisherman and he was a great this or he was a great athlete or he was a great, he had a lot of knowledge. And I, what that man, they said he was the most skillful, personal soul winner that they had ever met. Ladies, I want to put a challenge forth to you people at Shining Light Baptist Church. I'm challenging it. Every one of you. You know why the Lord's left us here? To witness to a low world that's in darkness. God cares about people out there. The Lord cares about everybody in Burke County. The Lord cares about that young man I picked up right up there and was on drugs the other day and, and give him a ride over to a trailer park that was not a nice place. I could tell where I took him. And I tried. The Lord cares about that boy. The Lord cares about our bus kids. The Lord cares about our bus kids' parents. Uh, he cares about their aunts and their uncles. He left us here to witness to them. Listen, he's got somebody he wants you to witness to or he took you to heaven. Amen. There's an insurance company. Great big building up in New York. And they called all their salesmen from around the country to come to a conference to teach them how to sell insurance. And they had all these uh, salesmen there, and they said, we'll meet on conference floor, uh, room 835, you know, on, on the 25th floor of this, of, of this building and all of that. And during that three-day conference, there's one old boy there that, uh, that he, uh, uh, he, he led the barber to the Lord. He led the elevator operator to the Lord. He led the waitress in the building to the Lord. And all of them were employees of that insurance company. And he said while he was there, there was the guy working the elevator. There was the guy working the parking lot. There was the lady working in the restaurant. Right under their nose was people that needed insurance. And he sold it to them. You know what he was? He was conscious of it. I'd give anything. I, I, I would pray that God would put a burden on our church like never before. What if the Lord is coming in the next few weeks, y'all? What if he is? I don't know who he is. He may not. Maybe years and years. But what if he is? Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be good if every one of us got a burden and got a handful of tracks and got out here and said, you know what? I'm going to witness. I'm going to make a fool out of myself for the Lord. Just, I mean, for the glory of God. Just go up and give somebody a track. You can do this. You can do this. You can take this right here, and it tells exactly how to be saved. And you can go up and say, here you are, sir. Can I give you something to read there? Anybody in here can do that. There's not a person in here. Frankie can do that. Uh, anybody can do that. And then you can say, I'm, uh, you've got somebody in your family. I guarantee it. I guarantee you've got somebody in your family. Thanksgiving's coming up. Christmas is coming up. People got questions. People got questions. What's going on? What is this mark of the beast, the vaccine, coronavirus? Stuff? Everybody's talking about it. They're talking about it at the flea market. They're talking about it at the, on the job. What a chance for us to witness, y'all. Just witness. Don't wait till you're inspired. Your inspiration will run out before you go visit it. You can get all inspired here this morning and say, glory to God, I'm going to witness. It won't last you get out of the parking lot. You make a commitment to God. I'm going to do it by your grace and then do it no matter how your flesh feels. You're here to witness. You're here to witness. You're here to witness. You ought to shout when I mention we're going to have a bus meeting. If you're sitting here and you say, oh, no, here he goes. 
going to bring them a little bright. I pray for your wicked soul, friend. I pray for your backslid, wicked heart. My soul. Listen, selling meth is bad, but that's not as bad as a Christian who don't want kids to come to Jesus. And buddy, the wood, people's full. We had a lady over in another building one long time ago. She said, I'm just not coming back no more if them kids are coming. What do you, you think I'm going to do? You think I'm going to quit bringing them so you can feel comfortable? Buddy, you're going to have a long wait, sister. I'm listen, listen, that could be my kid out there. That could be my grandchild out there. That could be my child in a place. I can't even tell you some of the messes some of them's in right now. I can't tell you. Uh, some of them, uh, uh, somebody told me about one this, this week. Uh, I seen somebody and they said they've been crying. Won't come to church. Won't come to church. Won't come to church. My Lord, y'all, we're here to witness. Number two, we're here to warn we are here to warn people. You know what the scripture said? The Bible said that we're to warn the wicked to flee from his wicked way, brother. We're here. People will face, you know what people will do? People will face discomfort to get up and go fishing in the morning. That ain't wrong. They'll get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, put on all that heavy, all that gear, big old boots, wet suit, uh, drive. It's made to keep you dry. I don't know why they call it a wet suit, but... They, uh, they, uh, now what Frank wears, that's a wetsuit, uh, uh, at least by the time he gets done with it. Uh, you, you know, they drive for hours, endure cold weather, stand out in the water all, all day long, fight a current, pull out a cold sandwich and eat it, and then come in and brag about what they caught. We're here to warn. We're here to warn. I read this article the other day. And the articles, I don't even know where I've seen that. You know how stuff just, new stuff just pops up on your phone? I think that's what it does. Well, I read this a little short article, and it said, this is the time of year, 1st of September, for baby copperheads to be born. This time of year, you wouldn't think that, would you? Wouldn't you think they'd be born this time of year? 1st of September, this is the time for baby copperheads. I said, oh, Lord. Oh, no. Because kids play out there, trampoline behind the house, grass all over the place. And then y'all know right there behind my house, I got a bunch of junk. We tried to clean it up there a little bit. You know how you hide all the old junk, wheelbarrows and everything behind the house so when company comes, they won't see it. And, uh, and, and it, it's snaky looking back in there. And you know, they're, they're, I, like two days later, I sent I one, a little one about that long in the pool in the skimmer. We killed that skimmer. There was one that looked like about that long. So that's twice in two or three days, baby copperheads, baby copperheads. And I told Kelly, I said, don't let him run around in the yard barefooted because that's not the only little baby copperhead. I doubt seriously if that mama copperhead had only one. You can be sure there's at least seven or eight more just like that out there running around. And the baby ones are just as deadly as, as the mamas and daddies. I don't know how that is. They say one just a few hours old can strike you, brother, and put that venom. Well, he was in there, and I, I got him out, and he wilded up there a little bit, and I took this thing and put it up to his mouth. and went, I, I let him do that two or three times. Then I crushed his head. <laughs> Sent him to snake hell, buddy. That's where they all ought to go. That's right. And I said, and, and I, I put it on a plate and took it in the house. I said, look at here. They went, ah! where, I forgot, where, where is he? Where's Frank? Oh, he's back there? I, I forgot what he did when I showed him that snake. He goes like this. He goes, <laughs> That's a good reaction, brother. That's a good reaction. I said, Frank, you don't never touch nothing like that. You know what I done? I warned her. I warned him. I want them, don't let them go out here in the grass. Don't let them do it. I don't want them. You know why? I care about them. I care about the kids. I care about them. Listen, don't, don't tell me you care about people and don't warn them. If we believe what we say we believe about hell and don't tell people, we're criminal. If we don't believe it, we're hypocrites. So if you're not witnessing, you're either a criminal or a hypocrite. 
You believe what you say you believe. You're a criminal if you don't tell. If you don't believe it, you're a hypocrite. God help us this morning, y'all. Warn people. Listen, if some kids started running down that hill going to the interstate, I'd say, stop, stop, no, watch out. He says, oh, I don't want to judge them. I think children should be allowed to make their own choices. You're I have crazy. Did you know that? You're a crazy person. Hey, some things you need to warn people about. And brother, we need to warn people. We need to warn people. And then the last thing, I said first, he left us here to witness. Second, he left us here to warn. Third, he left us here to weep. Weep. Don't do no good to weep in heaven. Don't do no good to warn people in heaven. What are you going to do? Go to heaven and say, boy, I'm warning you. They don't need warning. They don't need crying over. I'm telling you, I've been preaching a long time. And the longer I've been doing this, the less and less tears you see in churches. And I'm going to tell you why we don't cry no more. Our hearts are hard. Our hearts get hard. There's so, what does the Bible say? Because iniquity shall abound. It's so much junk. You just hear so much trash all the time. There's so much sin. There's so much ungodliness. There's so much perversion everywhere you look. You finally just get apathetic. You just don't care. You say, well, who the heck with it? I'm trying to survive myself. Listen, people, we need to leave. The Bible said, let me give you some scripture here this, this morning. Psalm 126 and verse 6, He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, you say, well, Brother Danny, we can't find... No, I ain't talking about fake crying. The only thing I can't stand is to hear a preacher do fake crying. Oh, no. You know, we don't need that. You, everybody knows it's fake, but him, I don't know if he believes it or not. But nobody else does. We don't need fake crying. We don't need, oh, y'all pray for my family. No, we need real tears, real tears. You say, well, Brother Danny, I want to cry. How come I can't cry? Our heart's hard. We need to fast. We need to pray. I challenge y'all. Look, look, y'all. People used to cry. Let me tell you, there's an older lady named Miss Edwards in Nebo. When I was 18 years old, I didn't even know her. And God told her, don't eat today. And she didn't eat all that day and all that night. And the Lord said, don't eat today, the next day. She didn't eat all that day or night. And the next day, the Lord said, don't eat. She went three days and three nights without eating, praying for our little community up there in Nebo. And he, she later, I didn't know this until I'd been saved a couple of months. And when that was over, the Lord said, I'm not ready. Go three more days. Six days and nights. I've never fasted that long. I fast often, but not long. And she went without for six days and nights. Old Joe Parson that preached that revival that I got saved in, that got me out of sin. Are you listening to me? Changed my life. Turned my life around. It wasn't this touchy-feely, lovey-dovey, good sound, everything perfect, put on a good show. Brother, they cried. Miss Edwards cried and wept for six days a night. Joe got up at 4 o'clock in the morning and prayed and travailed at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. And when that revival come, people started going and getting saved. And another one started going and getting saved. And I heard about one of my friends getting saved. And when I heard about that, something hit me in the heart right there. They wasn't giving away a, a, a 35 millimeter camera that got me to come. That ain't wrong. If you want to give somebody a camera, do it. I heard that one of my friends got saved, and it got a hold of me. And it, got, it was conviction, and I didn't know what that was. And Holy Ghost conviction settled in upon me. Y'all, look, look, it don't look like many others are going to do it. I don't know if any other church is going to do it or not. I believe there are some. But who, it, 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 what about us? What about shining light? Somebody prayed for you. Somebody wept for you. Somebody wept for me. I've, 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 you say, Brother Danny, I've lost my tears. I know I go a long time without crying, and I start thinking, man, I messed up somewhere. It ain't about just put forth truth up here. That's just part of my job. I'm supposed to care, and that's something you can't fake. You know the old saying is, they don't care how much you know till they know how much you care. You know who won you, the Lord? Somebody that you realize cared about you. Cared about you. 
Paul said in Romans 10 and verse 9, he said, my heart's desire for Israel is that they might be saved. Paul, the apostle Paul, said in the word of God, there he said, for I myself, listen, this, this scripture has always bothered me. Romans 9, 3, Paul said, I wish that I could be accursed for Israel, my brethren's sake. You know what he's saying? He's saying, if I could, I'd wish God's curse on me. I'd go to hell if Israel could get saved. I was a man to get some results, buddy. I was a man to get some results. Like the old preachers used to say, Lord, give me souls or take my soul. That's the way to get results, buddy. He that goeth forth and weepeth. I'll tell you this story. Years ago at Maynardville, New York, the nation was shocked as it got put on TV and went across the airways that a seven-year-old boy had fell in a well, deep well shaft, and was trapped. And obviously his family was losing it. The longer he stayed in there for hours, I think a day or two, and they said the longer he stays in there, the less chance he's got of surviving. They finally got to where the doctor said he chances one out of a million of living. Every person in that community came out. Hundreds of people were watching and praying. People were crying. People were praying and asking God to help. 20 hours of digging. They dug. And they dug, and they dug for 20 hours. They didn't just go out and say, well, I don't think there's no hope for him, no way. He should know better. I, they went to work and dug and dug and dug. And finally, somebody reached that boy and hollered out and said, we got him. And somebody went, oh, thank the Lord, thank the Lord, thank the Lord, thank the Lord. And they began to pull that boy up and about halfway up. The rescue workers hollered, said, his eyes open, he's alive. And his daddy jumped up and said, he's alive, he's alive. And women fell down on their knees and started thanking God and praying. And was, everybody was hugging necks and crying when they rescued that little boy and brought him out. And they said people were, were shouting and lifted their face to the sky and screamed, it's a miracle. And you know why? People were concerned. You know what got that boy out of that well? People got concerned. People got concerned, y'all. People got concerned. May God help me. Start with me. I'm the preacher. I ought to be the first one in that altar this morning saying, God, let me be concerned. Let me care about lost people. Let me care about their soul. Let me care about where they're going. And Lord, if we'll get concerned, somebody's going to get rescued. Somebody get rescued. That's the way you, you, you know how you be a good bus worker? You, get, you care about people. You get concerned about other people. You know why he left him here? He's like David. You know what David said in Psalm 119, verse 30, 136? Let's do scripture, y'all. Rivers of waters run down my eyes because of the heathen that don't keep your laws at my hand. David said, I bawl my eyes out. David, the king that killed the giant. You know, people have all oh, that David, he's a wicked man and everything. That's why God said he's a man after his own heart. He bawled his eyes out when he looked around and seen people not living right. We get a smart mouth attitude. A bunch of dogs there ought to get what they deserve. There is a sense when you got to preach against stuff. I know that. You know what Jeremiah said? Jeremiah said, Oh, that my head were waters. And I might weep day and night for my people. They call him the weeping prophet. You know why the Lord left us here? He left us here to witness. He left us here to warn people. And he left us here to weep for people. You know what Jesus did? The Bible said Jesus wept. Come on, Miss Desi. I want us to stand by our heads this morning. Every head bowed and every eye closed. I don't know how you feel about it this morning, but I feel like 
I need my tears back. I need my tears. That's why God left us here. He didn't just leave you here to eat and take up space. He left you here to witness, to warn, and to weep. She's playing softly. This is the invitation. I'm going to get down here on my knees, and I'm going to say, Lord, give me my tears, real tears, not fake crocodile, bunch of junk. Well, I really care about people. It's easy. It's easy to try to be the genius and have all the answers to world problems. But how much have you cried? How much have we wept? Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. You're here this morning. You need to get your life back right with God. You've been backslid. The coronavirus has knocked you out. And you need to get back in there. Be a good time to do it right now. Be a good time to do it right now. Let's do that right now. Slip out of your seat. Get down here. Get down on your knees. Say, preacher, I let the devil use the coronavirus to knock me out of church. And I'm sick of it. I want to get back in here. Serve you, Lord, and do the right thing. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's right. That's right. Others coming. Others coming. Let's get down on our knees this morning and pray. Heavenly Father, I beg you in Jesus' name that you would forgive us of all of our sin. Lord, forgive us for our hardness of heart. And Lord, help us to break up our fallow ground, so not among thorns. I pray, God, that you'd bless every single person here this morning on this altar. God, give us a burden for lost souls. I pray that you'd help every person here to make up their mind. We're going to be a witness and, and warn people and weep for people. Oh, God, give us tears of, of a burden, Lord. Put a burden on our heart, Lord. We can't just conjure it up. We can't just manufacture it in the flesh. We can't just decide we're going to care. Lord, help us to really care. Lord, to care about souls. And Lord, to weep. Lord, in the day and night. And to care about men, women, boys and girls. Have mercy on us, O oh Lord. Bless our church. Give us a church full of people like John Baser. And be a, a soul winner for the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless our church, Lord, as we go. Help every one of us here to witness to somebody this week. Lord, let us win somebody. Help us, lead us to that soul. Give us the right words to say. Help us to come with rejoicing, bringing our cheese with us. Bless these on the altar this morning. God, do what ought to be done. Get us ready for camp meeting coming up here in a couple of weeks. Oh, God, do what ought to be done in every life. Save souls. Stir our hearts, Lord. Send a great revival during these dark days and difficult times. And Lord, increase our faith. Help us to be strong in the Lord and the power of your mind. We'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Amen.